Greetings friends and welcome to this edition of Tales of Cat Catastrophes, the video series where I scour the internet and my own personal experiences to bring you tales of feline folly, all in an effort to promote my new book, Sometimes Kitties, a children's picture book written to delight the young and never get old. Today's story is another personal story concerning my wife's cat, Lydia, a little black and white tabby cat that uh, was very uh, cat-like in her mercurial nature. She never fully understood whether or not she liked you. So Lydia, like every other cat in the world, was a predator. She was a hunter and she was actually kind of good at it. We didn't know this because she was an indoor cat for years. We kept her inside when we were living in apartments multiple apartments. My wife and I moved around a lot in our early days. We never let her out, but when we moved into our current home, we started letting her out. And it turns out Lydia never lost her hunting skills, and she would occasionally bring back a dead varmint as a gift for the whole family, uh, which is lovely. Usually wild mice or mouse-like little rodents, little animals. She wasn't a big cat. She was also not necessarily a very vocal cat unless she was hungry. So when she wanted to come back inside, she would claw at the door, make a super annoying sound, and it was a problem because at the drawing board, having to open and shut that door three times in an hour, it was rough. One day she came to that door and she wasn't clawing she was making a meowing sound that I had not heard before. She sounded, frankly, she sounded injured. Uh, I am going to mimic it now because I can't describe it any other way. This is embarrassing. <clears throat> that weird tail at the end of it, like there's something wrong in her throat. And she would meow like that very loudly, so I would let her in. And unbeknownst to me, I didn't check because I didn't know I was supposed to check, she came in with a mouse in her mouth. A live mouse came in and put it down. And as soon as she put it down, it takes off. And as soon as it takes off, she goes after it and it goes onto the couch. And she gets to the edge of the couch and just sits there. Stretch, yawn gets up, walks over somewhere else, lays down and that's it. It's like, what? Lydia, what the hell are you doing? Like the entire reason my species keeps your species around is so that this stuff doesn't happen. And when it does happen, you can, you can get it, get that mouse. And Lydia just looked at me like, and starts grooming herself because why would she respond to any of my feelings or hostilities or angers so I can't get to the mouse I try I like fish stuff under the couch I can't even see it and I just pretend like it's not there and my wife who works nights it's about the time for her to wake up so she wakes up I bring her her coffee and we're hanging out and uh, our, our little baby who was much younger at the time said hey mommy there's a mouse in the room and my wife says, oh, is there really? Like they're playing a game and I just turn white. And my wife can read me exceptionally well, which is both a blessing and a curse. More blessing than curse, but when you're trying to play it cool, it cannot happen, just can't. So I'm just looking like this, thinking that I've got a good poker face on. There's a reason I don't play poker. And my wife asks me, hey, is there something wrong? Nope, nope, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Real quick, y'all look over that way. And while they're definitely not looking that way, they're watching me. I look and I see that stupid mouse had crawled into this corner over there. And I got uh, a plastic basket and I covered up the mouse and I put a giant sheet of cardboard under there and I picked it up. It came outside and threw it out and it landed in the grass and on some leaves and like burrowed a little bit, but its entire butt was sticking out. And like I said, there's hawks everywhere and I want this mouse to have a fighting chance. I would hate for it to have itself grabbed by the butt. So I take a stick, I give it a little poke, it burrows away under the leaves and that's that. Fast forward about a week or two. Something you need to know about my wife. Smart as a whip, brilliant, brave, 
She's afraid of snakes. She is desperately afraid of snakes. Like, it is a full-blown phobia. Perfect example, one day we pull into the driveway and she doesn't want to get out of the car. Why? Because there is a stick right outside of her car door that is snake-like. Not a snake, snake-like. So she says, I know it's not a real snake. I know it is just a stick, but could you please get rid of that stick before I get out of this car? And of course I did. And that just demonstrates the snaky fear. Well, I let Liddy out one day, I get back to work, and about an hour later I hear that that awful noise, and I'm coming to open up the door to see what's wrong with this cat because I had not yet learned my lesson, but I stopped right at the door, and I opened it up just a crack, not enough for her to come in. Not enough for her to come in, but just a crack, and I look down, and I see her look up at me, and in her mouth is a baby green snake. Still alive. I flip out. Lydia, what are you doing? You know how bad snakes are in the house. Why would you bring this here? Why is it alive? This isn't a gift, it's an insult. Why would you do this? And Lydia, who has known me at this point for a very long time, we understand each other, we share a language. That cat puts the snake down very gingerly, looks up at me, says, Look, fool, I never see you hunt, okay? I'm doing this for you. I'm bringing in here, I'm bringing varmints into your house so that you can figure out to hunt. Otherwise, how do I know you're gonna eat? I honestly, I feel like there should be more gratitude for, wait, where are you going, where are you going? And as soon as she put that snake down, the baby snake lands on the deck and just kind of looks around like, oh, I'm free, and starts wiggling between two boards and Lydia's just batting, trying to get him back. Oh, now that, I hope you're happy with yourself. Look at that, it took me an hour to catch this guy. Oh, I can't even right now. And Lydia gets on her bench and sits down and eyeballs me. Just, she is just eyeballing me. Look, I shut the door behind me. Look, Lydia, it's not that I'm unimpressed, all right? That's not what this is about. It's just, you know that your mom is deathly afraid of snakes. We can't be bringing snakes into this. She's a cat, she doesn't know what the right finger is. And that was the end of the conversation, just back away slowly, shut the door quietly, and Lydia stayed out for the rest of the day. And I maintain to this day that she stayed out abnormally long after that because she could not stand the sight of me. I caused her to lose her quarry for that afternoon. Anyway. I hope that you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoy my illustration. If you do, please consider backing my new book, Sometimes Kitties, on Kickstarter. And until I see you next time, please give your furry loved one some scritches from me and take care. There is some cotton picking dog just over yonder that won't stop barking. I just, I have no idea what it's gonna do to the audio on this thing. I hope it works out. He waits till I'm speaking. It's like he knows. <laughs>